Afternoon all. Now I've got a little bit of sun on my desk today so it seems like quite a good opportunity to review this. It's a solar power bank. USB output sockets there for charging your mobile phone. Now it's described on the back as a solar power bank with capacity 30,000 milliamp hours. Hmm. 30 amp hours in other words. Uh, input is 5 volt DC 1 amp and or solar of course and the outputs are 5 volt 1 amp and uh, also 5 volts 2.1 amps. Now the sunlight's just dropped a little bit for the moment which is quite a good thing because it means I can show you this top panel. So we've got a 2 amp USB output, a button labelled on off four blue LEDs with that sort of incrementing level bar, um, a 5 volt in micro USB, and above that is a white LED which acts as a flashlight, and then on the right there's a 1 amp uh, 5 volt USB output. Now you can see that the four blue lights are doing very strange things. They're meant to increment 1, 2, 3, 4, and some of the time they do. Now the sun's coming out again now and when the sun is strongly shining on the solar panel the lights do seem to behave. They increment in this one, two, three, four fashion. But if the light level drops it does really weird things and it's fairly obvious that it's not properly charging when it's uh, got anything less than full sun on it. And that is a bit of a problem. So take this position here on my desk. It's out of direct sunlight. The sunlight's over there. And so the solar panel is receiving very little power. And what's the unit doing? Well, it's just burning all the power up by putting those four LEDs on. Now my guess, now the sun level has dropped and the four LEDs have gone out. So that's the thing in its rest position. But my guess is that those LEDs must burn when they're all four lit about 50 milliamps I would guess and I don't suppose it's getting much more than about 50 milliamps coming in so this thing at certain times just gobbles up all the juice that's coming in from the sunlight by switching those four LEDs on it's not great okay while the light level is low let me show you what the on off button does if I press it and it's very difficult to press because it's sort of recessed you get a few flashes and then it shows you the power level. So it's saying that it's three quarters charged, which is fine. And then after a short period of time, the lights kind of go out one by one. If I press and hold, it doesn't always work. Yeah, if you press and hold, the white LED comes on. That's the flashlight. Press and hold again, and that goes out. So the Solar panel side of things is not very convincing. I had this on my windowsill for a couple of days and it was on one LED, uh, so 25% charge, and it just didn't seem to go up. So it's not very good at harvesting energy from an overcast sky. And I think that's largely because it just simply wastes all the power that it's getting by having those four LEDs on. They could have done a lot better job of um, energy harvesting than, than they've done. Light level's dropping now. So it's receiving almost nothing and it's still got those four LEDs on. Okay, screwdriver time. Time to open this thing up and in particular to take a look at that 30,000 milliamp hour battery rating. So this is what's inside and here's the truth about the battery rating. We've got two of these lithium polymer 3.7 volt 2400 milliamp hour cells. You can see there that there are two sandwiched on top of each other. So this isn't 30,000 milliamp hours, it's actually only 4800 milliamp hours. And the construction of this thing is really horrible. The batteries are sellotaped to that rear panel using some double sided sticky stuff 
and then everything's sort of held apart from everything else using these piles of double-sided sticky foam pads. You can see that in here on the solar panel there's a whole heap of them, there's about three there. The solar panel's not really fixed in very well, it bends if you press on it. Um, you can see that it doesn't fit into the top part of the case very well. It's only held there by the fact that the batteries have these stacks of rubber pads pushing everything apart. It's a really lousy construction. So inside you've just got the uh, solar panel here um, and the two lithium polymer batteries here and they're wired to this circuit board and on the board we have an unidentified uh, microcontroller there, there are no markings on it, an inductor there and a couple of diodes for the boost converter to turn 3.7 volts from the packs into five. Uh, there's a DW01 battery protection IC here and I think a couple of 8205 um, dual MOSFETs for battery protection so it's probably the case that these uh, lithium packs don't have their own protection. Now there's a chip here, this 8-pin one, uh, with 4056 written on it so my guess is that that is a TP4056 um, lithium charge chip, uh, like the one on the modules that uh, I've been looking at earlier. Let's have a closer look at that. So there's the 4056 you can see printed on that chip. So I'm pretty sure that is a TP4056 lithium charger chip. And then on the back of the board um, we've got quite a lot of these low value resistors um, for current measurement. There's two there, there's another one here. Um, there are a couple of 8205 dual MOSFETs for uh, switching, possibly turning the USBs on and off, I don't know. And then here there's a little cluster of four resistors up by one of the USBs, which looks like the four resistors that you get on USB sockets that are designed to charge old Apple iPods. So this looks like it's quite an old circuit design. Now if you ignore the solar panel, and just connect um, 5 volts to the micro USB, USB input connector and uh, charge the two 2400 milliamp hour cells, you've got yourself a moderately good mobile power bank. But you've got to bear in mind that the capacity is no more than just two 18650 cells. Uh, these are 2600. So uh, these two cells actually have more capacity than the two flat packs in this mobile power bank. So it's really nothing to write home about. And because the solar panel side of things is so poorly implemented, with these four LEDs just wasting most of the energy that's coming in from this panel, unless of course it's under direct sun where it does work quite well, I can't really recommend this mobile power bank because the solar panel is, is really a waste of time. And I mean it has to be understood that solar panels are all about size, so anything small like this. This is only capable of generating one watt or something like that. It's just not worth it. It's so much more sensible to go for a big solar panel and charge big batteries. These small solar panel devices are really not worth bothering with. So I'm afraid I can't really recommend this solar power bank. Um, the solar energy harvesting side of things is very poor. Um, the storage capacity, 4800 milliamp hours, isn't particularly spectacular. The 30,000 milliamp hours uh, printed on the back is just a downright lie. The physical construction of the unit is just absolutely terrible. The circuit looks pretty old, uh, old school, nothing really uh, very intelligent there. Um, no, I wouldn't recommend this at all. In fact, I'm almost considering not putting it back together and using those lithium cells for something else. I'll have to have a think about that.